Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I am really excited to bring you this interview I had with Alton Lorenzo Matthews, who's also known as the Dog Father. He has the Dog Father's Barbecue. It's the D A W G F A T H A apostrophe S Barbecue. So the Dog Father's Barbecue. He has a YouTube channel that is blowing up. I'll have a link below to his YouTube channel and every other way to get a hold of him. But to start off, to celebrate our interview and to make it kind of fun, from August 22nd, 2020 till August 30th, 2020, there's going to be a contest. And it's going to be a contest for the four barbecue sauces that John Brotherton came out with called Burnt Ends. Here's a photo of it. They are Fatal Mango, which is a Texas barbecue sauce. White Wrath, which is an Alabama white sauce. Reverse Sear, which is another Texas barbecue sauce. And Reaper Gold, which is a Carolina mustard-based sauce. All killer. All you have to do, it's super easy. Just comment below what your favorite Dog Father's barbecue video is, which one you love the best. Put that in your instantly entered. Also, if you share this, you get three extra entries. You can enter every day, multiple times, multiple comments so again enter as often as you want it's only available to be shipped within the contiguous united states and when we hit midnight on the 30th we'll do a randomizer and pick one winner to ship out and we'll notify that person on the 31st fun way to celebrate my friends and alton and i both love john brotherton so it's perfect but this interview you're going to really love because he goes into his background which wasn't barbecue barbecue is already always part of his life but he wasn't selling it to the public, nor was he doing these YouTube videos. He talks about how he got into the YouTube videos, all about his channel, all about his philosophy, and what he wants people to get out of the channel, and how his channel has grown so much. So he gives a lot of advice and tips and things about YouTube, so if you're interested in starting your own YouTube channel, or you have one, this has great advice. Also, he had some issues with his back. And we talk about his, like for seven to eight minutes, we talk about his different surgeries and things that he's had regarding that and his recovery. And I have a similar situation with my mom dealing with her, helping her. So we talk a little bit about that. It's not necessarily barbecue, but it's life stuff and it's about him. And I think that you'll get a lot out of it. If you know somebody that has back issues or if you do, you may not be as scared to do the things that he's done. Basically, this is a love letter to barbecue how much he loves barbecue, how much I love barbecue, and how those worlds collide, and what it is to be a part of that barbecue family. I can't thank Alton enough for taking the time, and the Kevin Barbecue Joint podcast and YouTube show is sponsored by Treaty Oak Distilling. That's treatyoakdistilling.com, or you can visit their physical location in Dripping Springs. They're known for their bourbons, their gin, their rum, their rice. You can get all those online, or you can get those at the location. They have a bunch of other items they're coming out with, like a day drinker, an old-fashioned that's already mixed, a bunch of cool stuff, just this take-and-go stuff that's coming out and that actually is available online. So check that out. Check them out. They're great people. They have a barbecue joint on-site called Allison's Restaurant, treatyoakdistilling.com. And if you're digging these... Subscribe to my channel, that way you don't miss out. I do two to three of these per week. I've done ones from the likes of Daniel Vaughn. I've done three with him, the barbecue editor, Texas Monthly, Tuffy Stone, Steven Rossler, Sonny Moberg, Jess Pryles, Nick Solaris, Kelly Yandel, tons of great people, lots of backlog. So subscribe, check out the backlog. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with all those backlogs. So you can check them all out. Really amazing people. I just want to share the barbecue world with people. I have a new website that's coming out in September. A really cool thing, a cool tool that you'll be able to use. So check back on that. But at the end, stay safe. I hope you're enjoying these. Have a great day. Again, I just want to thank the dog father for taking time. Dude, so, I mean, people, you know, I get dog father, I get out, and I get it all over the place, you know? What do you so, like, so, say, as growing growing up, what would people call you, Al? or what? Uh, Yeah, uh, mostly, um, you know, mostly friends and family all call me Al. Uh, people that don't know me, uh, they call me Alton. <laughs> and I say, you know, at, at first I would correct and say, no, it's not Alton, it's Alton, you know, and, and, uh, after a while, it happens so often. I just whatever. <laughs> there are people there. Are, there are people that are very, very, very particular about their name. Like if you make there's there was a guy he, he that I live in an apartment complex and his name is spelled D A V I N, which you think would be Davin, but it's Davin, and everyone would mispronounce it, and he gets so angry. And I kept thinking, life is too short to be, especially now with COVID. Like, gosh, just relax. <laughs> absolutely absolutely as long as you don't get hey you you know you're at least in the bar right there. well cool well i'm glad we finally got a chance to do this this is it's been a little while in the, in the making but how how are you doing right now and then we'll jump back i want to hear all about your 
your journey to where you are today. And also your YouTube channel is killer. It's blowing up. I want to talk a lot about that too. And also maybe some advice. It looks like we have a lot of friends that are doing YouTube stuff to do as well. If you know, YouTube is actually a small community, you know, <laughs> you know, when you start to look around at the people that you know, that are making videos, you know, and that you actually interact with and man, you just see them everywhere, you know? So it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And it actually, it probably, it's, it's, I guess we've jumped into this a little bit, but it is, it gives people something to do while they're kind of, they're stuck and it gives them opportunity. And, and like you, like your channel, it's exponentially grown, which is, which is really amazing. So let's, well, first off, what is your channel's name? And then let's go back to your history and find out. My channel is called the dog father's barbecue and it's spelled D A W G F A T H A apostrophe S. So dog father's barbecue, obviously spin on the Godfather, you know, and, 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 and ironically it was, you know, in a previous uh, work life, uh, I used to work for, uh, you know, a semiconductor company and I uh, had a group of technicians that worked under me and, and uh, we kind of affectionately named ourselves the dog pound. You know, we all had our little dog names, you know, whatever. And uh, they called me the dog father since I had, you know, started this or whatever. And so uh, the dog father kind of stuck. Oh, I was wondering how that happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, how it, that's how it actually came about, you know, and then when... Um, I started playing around with barbecue and, uh, you know, thinking about doing the catering thing. And I'm sitting around trying to figure out, man, what am I going to name this thing? You know, and and uh, dude, everybody calls you the dog father. He's like dog father's barbecue. And so that's how it actually started. Well, that's cool. I started the LLC and everything back in uh, 2007, you know, but had small kids and, you know, insurance, you need all that stuff. So I kind of got sucked back into the corporate world and. Um, you know, a few years later, uh, you know, my wife and, uh, my, one of my friends who turns out to be, you know, my official photographer, um, uh, man, they got me into doing YouTube, you know, they finally uh, talked me into doing it. And I finally said, okay, you know what? It's a great way to, you know, stay connected into the barbecue world. And I'm here in, in, you know, arguably the barbecue capital, you know? And so, you know what? Hey, let's do some videos and, and, uh, get around and do some, reviews or not necessarily reviews but kind of spotlights on the smaller guys you know that people don't really know you know and put it out there but as you know you know being a youtube creator yourself you kind of have to you know make sure you're making content that people are gravitating to for sure ironically enough the uh the reviews or the spotlights or whatever i would do on the different barbecue places really didn't hit you know and, and i thought that was crazy because you know you I mean, come on, man. You go over here to, you know, you got Brotherton right down the street. You you know, you got Curlin. I was Brett. Yeah, I, you know, Brett's. And, you know, the very first day I released a video, we went to uh, Snow's and we went to Brett's the same day. I think that was the first one I saw. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, me over there with the uh, cell phone and kind of holding it and not knowing proper angles. And I mean, I look at these videos now and I'm like, oh, my God, there was complete, they were completely horrible, you know, but... It was fun. You know, you got to jump out there somehow. Uh, but they didn't really, you know, they didn't really do anything, you know. And, and so I spent probably, you know, I spent probably a year making a bunch of different videos that <laughs> nobody saw. So, you know, I kind of had to step, uh, you know, take a step back and kind of figure things out, figure out how to put the videos on YouTube and that type of thing. And what people are searching for. What people, exactly, you know. And, and you know, one of the things is, you know, all, people always want brisket, you know, and... Tons of, of of content creators make brisket, and I did my thinking. I'm gonna do something different, you know. Whatever they're doing, I'm gonna do something de something else, you know. And and it didn't really it didn't really hit. And so finally, after doing a little bit of research and figuring out how to put stuff on YouTube so it can be found, I went ahead and did a brisket tutorial, you know. And, and let's show people how to make Texas style brisket, basically Central Texas style brisket. And man, that video it first came out probably two weeks you know nothing really special and then all of a sudden it just took off do you know what caused it or do you know what was there something that someone shared or well the only thing that i can figure uh in going back and looking at some of the the analytics and things of that nature is uh, it got picked up by google and so when people were doing searches for smoke brisket or how to smoke brisket in google it was pulling my video that's huge yeah it, it just it was just one of those things where the algorithm it just found a sweet spot there and uh, my channel got ranked for it and 
you know, the, the views started coming. And I think to uh, this day, we're over 750,000 views on this uh, video. And that's, what, 90 days or so, which was just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, you know, and that thing took off. And uh, <laughs> funny thing that happened was uh, a little while back, I, I think at the time, I was starting to take off. I was getting some tr some traction. You know, and when I first started, this was about, I think I was about 2,200 subs into the game. You know, and uh, this video started taking off, uh, I think, roughly about maybe two, three weeks later, I was at probably 14,000 subs. It was how fast it was it was taking off. And and then we got to, I got this email. And, you know, you get a, you get a ton, there's a YouTube content creator, you get a lot of emails, you know. And so I got this email. Yeah, you get a lot. So you don't really know what's real or, or what have you. But I got this email and it, you know, was talking about, you know, content uh, creator, you know, on the rise or whatever. And I was thinking, oh, this is probably some spam, you know, email or whatever. And that deleted, kept going. Well, a couple days later, I was out here on my on my patio. I call it Barbecue Boulevard, where I have all my cookers and do all my videos and stuff. So anyway, I was out here on Barbecue Boulevard um, doing a cook or whatever. And I'm in a break time from it. And I'm kind of playing around with my YouTube studio and, uh, you know, trying to reply back to comments. You know, I really try to, you know, reach out to everybody that, it gets it gets hard, but I really try to comment and, and, you know, give everybody a little piece of time, you know, that invested in, you know, watching my video and everything. So anyway, I pulled this up this day and all of a sudden I saw this big jump in subs and I'm like, wow, what what's going on? You know, and trying to figure out what's going on. So I, I'm talking to my wife. I said, man, I don't know what happened, but something popped, you know, and she said, well, what about that email? And I was like, oh, yeah, let me go back and see what this was, you know, so I went back and go look at it. And it basically was a, a, a email from YouTube saying that, you know, hey, they really, you know, liked what I was doing on my channel or whatever. And they selected me to be a content creator on the rise. And they were going to profile my page on the YouTube uh, homepage on, a, I can't, trending tab, I think is what it was. I think that's what it was. I remember seeing it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I went in there and I went to go look and bam, got all this barbecue all across the place, all, you know, on the page. And I'm like, wow, you know, I thought that was really cool. And man, it just pow the the subs took off, you know. And I mean, I was I was on a slow day. And I know this sounds really ridiculous, but on a slow day, I was gaining 500 subs a day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how much it just started coming. And it, and it what it does is it highlight. I guess it I guess for people, I don't know how many people go straight to the first page, but I guess when I open up my app, you were there like three quarters of the way down. It was something after yeah. you had mentioned that I looked and I'm like holy heck, he really is. Like, that's pretty crazy. And it's amazing, too, how many people are using YouTube for entertainment purposes. People are using it because they're bored or want to learn. It's it's a It was a, a bunch of things, I guess, that happened at the right time for it, you know? And it, unfortunately, you know, pandemic and everybody's got a lot more time sitting at home and, and like you said, using YouTube for entertainment and, uh, you know, things of that nature. And then, of course, you know, 4th of July, you know, come up and, and people are looking for different ways to do different types of barbecue. And, you know, the channel is barbecue. So you got your brisket, your ribs and all this stuff on there. And so it just it was the right timing, you know, um, seasonal and, and just, you know, with everybody having those eyes on YouTube. And it just it just it pops. Well, and they're also your videos and you have a number of it's not just that one video. You have a number of videos and I'll put links to all that below as well as if I could figure out how to put a link on the actual uh, right, right below us, but I could, but if <laughs> sometimes it's, it's difficult for me to figure all those things out, even though I've done this for a little while, <laughs> I'm still doing this in front of a thatched thing. So <laughs> people are like, what the heck, where are you in the bunker? Well, but it's, but I, but I do, <laughs> but it I, also, your videos are engaging. You're engaging there. That, that video, that one on, on how to do brisket is very informative and all your other videos. Are, so I think it's all those things help too. If your if your content wasn't great, I don't think it would be. I don't think people would be apt to sub subscribe because not everyone's subscribing to every channel. Right, right. Yeah, you know, and and again, trying to find that, you know, uh, as we talk about being a content creator and trying to figure things out, it, it's about trying to find that niche, you know, and 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 what people are are wanting from your uh, your channel, and 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 one of the things I had to realize was that I can't make what I want to make. I have to make what they want to see, you know. And, and that's huge. And if you're trying to go for the growth, that's what you kind of have to do, you know. And, and even though I want to make, you know, X, Y, Z, they want to see ABC. So I got to go do this. 
platform and then double down on it, triple down on it and those you know types of things just so you can kind of grow. And uh, one of the things that it turned out to be was, man, it, it my channel has evolved into a how to, you know, a beginner backyard uh, barbecue uh, cook, you know, and, and I don't mind that at all. You know, I love to barbecue. Uh, I love to grill. I love to, you know, sit around talking about it, you know, and, and you know, if I can help somebody make, um, you know, better barbecue, hey, I'm all for it. I'm not one of those guys that, you know, so many people tell you, oh, you have to make barbecue on an offset. It has to be with burning wood splits and this and that and the other. Come on, man, we're cooking. It's not, you know, rocket science and, you know, this and that and the other. It's not baking, and that's not a dig at baking. I can't bake because I'm not precise like that. You know? I can cook because you can fudge factor in cooking, but baking, you got to be precise. But I tell people, in, you know, in, in, in um, you know, barbecue, man, have fun with it. There's no rules. You're making backyard barbecue. Do what you know. Do what you want to do. If you find a way that you know you can make uh, whatever it is that you want to make, do that's all you have to do. There's a million ways to make it. You just find one that works for you and stick with it. Exactly. And you can't. Yeah, you have to have respect for for that because you don't know everyone's life. You don't know how busy they are or how much time they want to put into something. They want really good food, and if you know if if a Traeger works, a pellet grill works, or an offset, or a Weber kettle, or a, whatever it is, yeah, that's and and you could mess all those up, and you can make all those wonderful. It's it's not absolutely, and also too, there's certain people that really like challenges, and there's people that don't have you know that that those are born that way. It's not their fault. No, no, but you know, I, I'm just you know my thing is I'm just trying to show you know my viewers that hey. You don't have to have a big, you know, expensive this cooker or that cooker. And people will, will, you know, I guess, as we alluded to earlier, so many emails and, you know, things of that nature asking for my advice about this and that and the other. And, um, you know, a lot of what I tell people, you know, if you're get, you're getting started, man, go get you a Weber kettle. You, know? you don't need to go buy some big, you know, expensive pellet smoker or a big offset or vertical or whatever it might be. Start with a Weber kettle. You know, and learn fire management with that Weber kettle. And to this day, yeah, I mean, all the cookers that I have, I literally still cook on my Weber kettle more than anything. You know, and, and people just believe that when I say that, and I'm I'm dead serious. It's nothing for me to go fire up the kettle and get a you know a brisket on it, or you know some ribs or chicken or whatever it might be. And so it's a very versatile cooker. You know, you can do a lot of different things with it, and so. I think that, you know, a lot of us on uh, in YouTube land that are, you know, barbecue, you know, content creating or whatever, we all have that Weber Kelly and we all love it. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to Tuffy Stone not only mm -hmm. like a month ago and Weber Kettle is one of his favorite things to go on to this day. And that man has won every award, every accolade. But it's so, so there's that's definitely that that's cool. So, so where did you grow up in Austin or in Texas? I did. I, you know, uh, it's funny because people ask me where I'm from and I say, oh, I'm from Virginia. You know, my family is from Virginia, but my, my dad was military. And so we moved around a, a little bit in the, the very early years. And then we ended up on Fort Hood, uh, Colleen area. Um, if you know Rossler. Yeah, I was going to say you know, Rossler. See, I mean, that's my whole boy, you know, from Colleen. <laughs> so, but Colleen, Fort Hood, man, that's where I, I grew up. Did all my schooling there, graduated there, came down to Austin, you know, you know pursuing electronics technology. Okay. And I've uh, been here ever since. That was back in... Jeez, time is flying. I ain't, I ain't gonna date myself here. You know, so, <laughs> it's been a little while back. I, I accidentally <laughs> slip how old I am every so often in these videos. So if, if anyone's actually paying attention, <laughs> but it, but it, time is what is time anymore? Anyways, so so then electronic technology. Yeah. What were you doing? Were you doing stuff with like circuit boards, like computer work, or what were you doing? I was, uh, uh, you know, building IC chips. Uh, worked for a company called Motorola. Uh, you know, did that for what, 17 years. And, uh, you know, it, it, it afforded me a great opportunity to, you know, establish roots here in Austin and uh, got to travel around and go to different places and realize that, you know, I like visiting other places, but I want to live here. Austin's special. What makes Austin so special to you? Man, uh, you know, Austin is, it's big enough, but it's small enough. You know, it's big enough to, to you know, you can get to different parts of the city and feel like you took a day trip, you know. And it's small enough that where at least where we're at, I can drive five, ten minutes down the road and be in the country, you know. And uh, you know we kind of like that, you know. My wife, you know, she's she's big on 
Jeeps, you know, and, you know, get the top off the Jeep and go for a drive. And, uh, you know, we get to do that, you know. And so roll over here to uh, Louis Mueller's and hang out with Wayne and, you know, and I mean, it's just it's, it's Austin is just a fun spot to be in. What part of Austin are you at? East. We're in a we're in a small uh, little uh, little town called Pflugerville. Oh, yeah. OK. Oh, you're in Pflugerville. I didn't know you were in Pflugerville, which is the, which yeah. is the easiest name to spell. I've heard people, you know, when I'm on on the phone with people for various whatevers and they see that and they're like, is that Pflugerville? <laughs> Like, no, it's just Pflugerville, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Okay, all right. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that that's exactly what... So, that, yeah, so then I'm sure Brotherton is somebody that you... Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> all the time. Yeah. You know, a funny story about uh, how, I, how I met him was uh, some years back, we... My wife and I decided, you know what, let's let's go ahead and, you know, do this food trailer thing and, and start trying to do barbecue and... Uh, I was doing barbecue at a at a bar, your local bar here, um, and we were literally setting you know setting up there and canopy and trailer and whatever and and it was so fun you know it was hot oh my god you know here in Austin Texas you it's know hot. summer I mean come on. it's hot and it's on asphalt and everything I'm like yeah we kind of need a food trailer you know and so we started looking around for uh, food trailers and, and uh, I came across Brotherton on. Um, I think he was on Craigslist or something, and he was uh, trying to sell one of his trailers. Okay. And so I went to go meet him at uh, you know a storage facility where he had this trailer, and we sat there, man. And I mean, first time we met, we just clicked and just started talking, you know, and whatever. And and next thing I know, I'm running into him at the grocery store, and you know, <laughs> here and there, and it's like, dude, you know what? We need to just exchange numbers, you know, and uh, and we've been cool ever since, man. And and it's been fun to watch him, you know, grow. Did you buy his trailer? Well, you know, I, I was trying not to go down that path, but no, we, we didn't buy the trailer. And, and I actually had found a trailer. It was going to be a brand new trailer with a porch and the whole whatever that I was going to have built up in Dallas area. And I was going to go on that particular weekend to go check it out. And what happened was I had a little mishap here at the house. It had a slip and fall on some uh, wet tile. And I ended up tearing my shoulder in half. Oh, and so I had to have surgery and get the uh, the tendons reattached and all of that stuff. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, everybody that, you know, jumps out there on a leap of faith to, uh, you know, start their own business. They always do that prayer. You know, God, if this is the sign, you know, give me a sign and let me know. I didn't know it was going to be like that. <laughs> you know? But but uh, that had me kind of reevaluate things for a little bit because obviously I couldn't use my arm, you know, for a while. I kind of put that on the back burner and uh, took a lot of uh, steam out of that, you know, out of that momentum. Well, with huh? your shoulder too, that's that's a that's a big a lot of that's a lot of rehab. Oh yeah, that was man. You know, uh, as you know, I just had uh, my third back surgery here. Yeah, I was going to talk. Ago. I was going to talk a little bit about that because that's something I'm really familiar with because I've been helping my mom. Yeah. But I think it's something that a lot of people don't understand the whole pain issue. And... Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. As I said, this was my third. Um, back surgery and this shoulder was way worse than any back surgery I've ever had as far as post-op okay you know, I mean it was it was ridiculous did you have to have it in a sling and oh yeah I had the sling with the I forgot what that little thing was called that it, uh, abductor I think is what it's called mm -hmm. but they have this the your arm in a sling it looked like this big mechanical <laughs> deal you know it was ridiculous but you had this little abductor that it sat on it and it kept your arm and your your shoulder it just a certain oh, angle. you had that. Oh, that okay, that thing. Okay, I've seen that. Oh my god. Oh, and it, you know, and, and the angle that they wanted into, you know, to be the most successful for the uh, the the repair, it hurt, man. <laughs> it hurt like hell. If I took the abductor off and I would let my arm down, it felt so much better, huh. you know. But doctor was like, no, nah, we need it out here like this. So yeah, it, it sucked. Do you play sports or something? How did you mess your back up? Or did you, was that from falls? Or so originally, uh, that was you know when I first moved to, to Austin. You know, I, I played football in, in high school. You know, for part of it, and I did a lot of working out back then. <laughs> but um, uh, came to Austin and uh, continued working out and that type of thing. Uh, and what happened was once we got to the point where uh, you know we started having children. You know, and it's like, oh, you know, I got to get the core strong, you know, and, you know, because we had, we came out of the gate with twins, you know, oh, and I'm wow. like, oh, I, 
<laughs> yeah, I gotta get strong and you know have you know and yeah you know doing the old medicine ball you know deal or whatever and uh, and uh, pop the disc. Ooh. Yeah, and so that's how the beginning of the back problem started. I mean, in football and you know whatever, I've I've had pulled muscles or whatever, but yeah. nothing like structural, you know. And so yeah, that's how it ended up happening. You know, I was uh, doing some working out and. And I guess I probably have some incorrect form or whatever that contributed to it. But yeah, that's how the whole back injury life started. And what was the first? What was the first surgery that you had? I had the uh, discectomy of L four. Okay, you had that. Okay. Yeah, so I had the discectomy of L four. That was back in two thousand five, and then uh, <laughs> the second one, I was moving a barbecue trailer uh, <laughs> from. We were doing a uh, Super Bowl cook for uh, two thousand eight. And so uh, Saturday or Super Bowl Sunday, two thousand eight, is when I popped L five, moving this this big barbecue trailer around. So I ended up having the second surgery, which is another discectomy of L five. And and if people don't know what that is, that's they sh- you're shaving part of the disc, right? It's- right. Yeah, you have your you know you have your vertebrae in your disc, and and basically it's kind of bulging out there, and they go in and. They cut off because all of that. putting pressure on the nerve. Exactly. And, you know, and even just a small, slight touch of that nerve is huge pain. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So you curled up in a fetal position, you know, for a couple of weeks or whatever before you get surgery or what have you. And, yeah, it was it was pretty bad. <laughs> and, the, and the third one, this recent one, was a discectomy too. Right? No, so this one here, uh, man, it, you know, again, when you're having those pressure on the nerves and you've had the L4, you've had the L5 discectomies, and over time... Basically, you have so much compression happening on that on the um, on the area in the canal of the the nerves, it just basically was causing too much pressure. So they did what's called a laminectomy. Okay. And so um, I had it, uh, what's called it's a laminectomy. A laminectomy. Say that fast. Yeah, I know that's but, not that's an easy one. From L four to S one, and so literally what they do. I believe the big bone sticking out the back, like I call it the dinosaur bone, is a spinous process or something like that. They basically cut that off. And then the lamina, which is the bone that's beside it that covers your uh, your your nerves and everything, they basically went down all three vertebrae and cut it out. And so you have no bone there covering your Spine, nerves yeah. and everything. And it's just covered by your muscle and then now whatever scarred material that forms to kind of keep it in there. And, and of course, when I heard that, I'm like, wait, what, you're going to do what? Yeah, like, that sounds that really bizarre. Sound like, <laughs> you know, and they said, well, no, um, honestly, you only need that when you're in your forming years. You know, when you're little growing up, oh, your okay. spine is growing. You only need it really then. Uh, after that, you know, no, it's not needed. And, and, you know, he's done it on people that's gone back to play football and all kinds of things. Oh. You know, and my thing was that I, I played golf. I played a lot of golf, you know, and I would probably play golf two to three times a week. And, uh, man, I haven't played golf in a couple of years now, you know, because of how this, you know, his back problem has gotten worse and worse. Oh. And so he says, yeah, after we do this and uh, you're able to get into rehab and all that, you should be able to get back to playing golf. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see. How do you feel? How far out is that? And this is the last, this isn't like an all back, back surgery talk, but, it, but, it, but it's but it's scary. But people have, but people could be listening to this and be like, you know, I have something. I'm really scared. My mom was really scared. She had lumbar spinal fusion of l4 l5 and then they did something i think with the s1 so they did i forget what that and they also opened up her sciatic nerve was compressed yeah to the point of like it was paper thin so they uncompressed it or whatever they do and then they sutured it together and uh so she's she's Uh, been she's been having ankle issues her ankle her right ankle the nerve pain feels like someone's taking a neat like a thumbnail to her ankle so we're fixing we're trying to work on that now but yeah so it's so how, how do you feel now you feel pretty good it, you know yeah you know first off good luck with that i hope she you know gets that taken care of because you know even from when i had this deal back in 2008 and like you say you know the the nerves how they travel down your legs and into your feet or whatever uh yeah i've got some numbness that I, it's probably going to be there the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and then I just, yeah, you probably, you, you actually killed part of your nerve. Yeah. You know, so I know how that, how that can be, but no, I, from this last procedure, I, man, I, I actually wondered if they really did anything. And I say that because I was expecting to have a lot of pain, you know, and this and that and the other. And, and I came away from that surgery, um, 
you know, my wife is my in-home nurse and she's around the clock, you know, regimented on that, take your medicine, take your medicine. And I finally, after a couple of days, was like, I don't think I need it. Wow, you know, that's and, good. And literally, we came off of, I think we did that surgery, it was on a Monday. We came off of the meds, I think, on Wednesday. And I never really felt, you know, any pain other than the incision, you know, where they, they put it back together with glue and, and whatever. Yeah, they had to make sure that's it. So, I mean, the, the, you know, just the uncomfortable feeling with the, suit, with the uh, incision, that was about it. You know, and so uh, the hardest thing is because I do feel, you know, relatively good, I'm trying to do too much. Exactly. And so when I went to the to my, you know, my two week uh, post-op appointment, the doctor says, look, I know you think you feel good and all that, but our, our restrictions are strict. Yeah. But you have to adhere to it, you know, and it's literally no lifting more than five pounds. Uh -huh. You know, and I, I got yelled at by my wife because I was in here going to, you know, do something with the chicken. And I had a whole chicken in my hand. She's like, put it down. You know, you're not supposed to be carrying that. But, you know, you feel kind of useless, uh -huh. you know, not lift anything. You can't twist. Twist, you can't uh, twisting. Over. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah. I know all that. <laughs> for six weeks. And I still have, I think, uh, a little over two weeks to go before we go back. And then hopefully I'll be able to get into, uh, you know, some rehab and things of that nature. But you've still been able to do stuff with your channel. A uh, little stuff, yeah. I haven't done anything major, um, you know, but, you know, cooking some some uh, ribs or, you know, whatever, you know, I can kind of play around with. Uh, and I went <laughs> I went last weekend and hooked up with my buddy Ryan uh, from Backline Smokers. And uh, we went over there and fired up the shot pit and uh, put some ribs on and uh, spent the day of it, you know, just doing ribs and kind of hanging out and and I thought I was okay you know and by the time I got home man I was done you know wow. the back was spinning and and so I had to spend Sunday pretty much doing nothing and trying to relax so that was my you know reminder that hey you're not 100% yet sit down somewhere and finish healing yeah, you know? yeah for so. sure do you cook for groups anymore do you cook per, do you cook and sell your food like prior to this, this back surgery because you said you were going to get a trailer. Did you go that route to cook? So I did, um, you know, prior to COVID, you know, obviously. Um, I kind of I kind of quit doing it once COVID came out. But no, I would, uh, you know, I would uh, promote and uh, advertise on a Facebook page, you know, and, and uh, you know, take orders and uh, fire up the pits. And, you know, yeah, I'd get the food warmer going and the whole nine and selling briskets and ribs and chicken and turkey and all of that from where did you find a location to do it or you do it outside of a restaurant or i mean a bar or a... no 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 this was all basically part of the uh catering the home-based catering so i have the you know the well i had it i sold my trailer i'm getting ready for a backline smoker pit hopefully <laughs> nice so anyway so i had my trailer pit you know out here and i have my food warmers and all of this stuff out here and and uh, basically, I would cook out, you know, in the driveway or on the back patio and have all this stuff, uh, you know, put in food warmers and packaged and delivered or, you know. So, yeah, that's what I was doing. Well, how did you learn really how to cook? Was that something trial and error or did you learn from a certain people or from videos or? Well, you know, the the original uh, how I got into it was from my mom and dad. OK. You know, and. My mom, uh, you know, would uh, always be in there seasoning meats, and my dad would be on the grill, and, and I kind of fell in love with that playing with the fire. And, of course, these are the days where we used to use charcoal lighter and, you know, this stuff and lighter fluid. And A lot of lighter fluid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's kind of how it started. And then, again, like I said, I, I came to Austin, you know, and uh, once I got to Austin and, and started getting around to all these different barbecue places and I started kind of seeing how they do different things and you start having conversations with people and uh, next thing you know, man, you got a little smoker there and you're playing around with it. Uh, you know, people hear uh, stories, you know, like from Aaron Franklin and how he starts on his, his little smoker in the backyard and mm -hmm. his first briskets were horrible. And, and I mean, that's that's the common story exactly. that you hear from a lot of central. So well, a lot of barbecue people all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, really, that's how we get started. You know, and you start playing around. I had my little New Braunfels uh, smoker in the backyard and started playing around with briskets and ribs and pork butts and all of that. And. And, uh, you know, I literally, as I was trying to gear up to do the uh, the catering business, 
I was literally honing all of these little recipes in, and my neighbors loved me. <laughs> you know, I'd be in the in the you know center of a cul-de-sac, and I'd have neighbors over, and I'm delivering, and I would. T- Dude, I will cook barbecue all the time for you. The only thing that I require is you give me good, honest, solid feedback. You know, if you think it sucks, tell me you think it sucks, and let's figure out how to make it better. That's great advice. You know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not thin-skinned with it or whatever. I mean, everybody's going to think their barbecue is the greatest, and I don't think my barbecue is the greatest. I think it's decent, but I'll let other people decide what it's going to be, you know? And if they love it, hey, cool, you know? Definitely. But, I mean, it's just how I, that's how I got started. You know, just playing around with it like that and uh, figuring out my methods and techniques and figuring out what I can do. And it's still something that I still learn, you know, daily. Yeah. You know, you know, what I thought I knew last year, I'm not doing today. You evolve with the times and, the, you know, the flavor profiles and, you know, things of that nature. And But you still kind of have your marks that you're looking for that you can transfer to any cooker that you use. So, so did you leave Motorola to do catering or were you doing it kind of in conjunction with yeah so i actually started uh, my llc about a month and a half before i left motorola okay you know i've been doing barbecue and taking it to work and you know hey guys what do you think you know and you know and everybody's loving it and they're wanting me to make stuff for this and that event and that event and blah 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 what really happened to kind of force my hand was that you know that good old offshore you know when they started taking products that we were building and offshoring the, yeah to china it's like, oh, okay, you know, it's time to go do something else. And it was kind of, at the time, it, it was it was kind of funny because when all of that was happening, there's so many people that I worked with and people that I knew that, you know, they were like, oh, my God, you know, they're going to eliminate your job. And how are you going to, you got small kids. Everybody was so worried. And uh, I literally, the day it happened, you know, they came in and said, hey, your job's been eliminated, you know, this and that, the other, blah, blah, blah. It was like a just a big, huge weight got lifted off my shoulders. Interesting. You know, and I, I walked out that day. I went home. I slept like I, I hadn't slept like that in I don't know how long. You know, I slept really solid. Got up the next day, and I went and bought a truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went and bought a truck, and, and, you know, people thought I was losing it. You know, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to be fine. You know, it's just, you know, if you're a hard worker and you mm-hmm. do what you're supposed to you know, things will work themselves exactly. out for, for sure. Best. That was when I jumped in full fledged with the uh, catering, and I started doing some gigs here and there, and uh, did some. One of the big things was I did a, a company party, you know, for this company out on the lake. The guy that that I was dealing with that set up the whole thing, you know, we got to talking, and he says, "Man, he goes, um, you know, I see that you used to do semiconductors and things." Like that. I'm like, "Yeah." He goes. Well, we're kind of looking for somebody, you know, you want to come in and interview? And I'm like, yeah, I'll come in and interview, you know. And so I went in there and interviewed and, you know, I worked with them for a couple of weeks. And then I ended up taking a job with the company I'm with now, you know. <laughs> and so it, it's just weird the way all of that kind of, you know, worked together. You know, I wanted to do just barbecue. But, you know, again, I had small kids and needed mm-hmm. insurance, things that, you know, that kind of guarantee. And I wasn't really at that position you know, where I could really jump out there and really just, you know what, don't worry about trying to work the corporate world anymore. I, I kind of still kind of needed it. And so it was like, yeah, let me let me see if I can jump back in it and then kind of balance it, you know. And and so it, got, it just worked for me to, you know what, let's stay the corporate route. I'll still do the barbecue, you know, for people, you know, when they want events and this and that and the other. Uh, now do the YouTube thing, you know. Yeah, and, I know. And, now you have a lot of hats. Oh, man. I mean, and it's. It's fun, you know, and, and I, it's like I tell my, my wife and kids, I'm like, I think I need to hire somebody just to do social media for me, <laughs> you know, because uh, all the emails and all of this stuff that you're, you're replying to, you know, and it, it, it annoys me when I get on a YouTube channel and, um, you know, they're, they're, they've got some great content and I want to interact with them and then you don't ever hear anything back from them. Mm-hmm. You know, they just make their make their their video, throw it out there, collect their AdSense check, and move on. You know, and and uh, I'm trying not to be that. You know, I I try to interact with each and everybody. I mean, it, it's crazy because you get thousands and thousands of comments and emails, and you know, it's just it's ridiculous. But I try to make sure I I reach out to everybody because, dude, they're the ones that's put me in the position I'm in. Oh, for sure, and they want to use you as a tool to learn. And a lot there's. 
not everyone is as fortunate to live in Austin or live in an area where you can get, you could ask people questions and also too, aren't as connected as you, you're not, it wasn't a forceful connection, but you're connected to a lot of people because you become friends with a lot of people in the barbecue community. And a lot of people are just starting out and they're just, or, or they've just, or they don't know any, or they live somewhere where they don't know, like the barbecue world. If I had never traveled to Texas and lived in Texas, or I had never gotten the bug by going to North Carolina so much for business, I, I, I'd probably be like my friends who they cook and they, a lot of times my friends just cook, drink, and then they burn everything. I'm in a, I'm in a fortunate, you know, spot, mm-hmm. a fortunate situation, you know, because like I said, we, you know, we said this is barbecue capital arguably. And, um, there's just a ton of different places you can go to and, and, and pe- it's not like it used to be, you know, where it was always oh, hush, hush, you know, I can't tell you what I'm doing, man, everybody, there's no secret. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard work, but there's no secret, you know, for, you know, the seasonings or how you run your pits or this and that and the other. You still have to get out there and do it. Mm-hmm. It's been fun having a lot of different conversation with people, you know, and, and learning. It's just funny when I talk to people that, you know, are at home cooks and they're like, oh, man, you know, I make barbecue just as good as, you know, Franklin or, <laughs> you know, Louis Mueller's or, you know, here and there. And I'm like, yeah, what kind of volume are you cooking on? You know, you, you are you cooking like, you know, 50, 60 briskets a day or, you know, what are you doing? On a consistent basis? <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm like, dude, I can make you one brisket probably just as good, but I don't know if I can make 50 or 60 briskets and be as consistent day in and day out. Yeah, four you know? or five days a week or it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I don't think people understand, you know, just how hard it really is mm-hmm. to make, vol- you know, volume barbecue and be consistent with it. And so, um, you know, when you, you, you know, see barbecue places and you think, oh, my God, that's expensive. No, there's a lot of time and a lot of talent invested in making that that uh, craft. So and a lot of people are using these days. They have to use a better quality meat because people expect that. And then beef prices have gone up, pork, price, everything's gone up. Even I'm finding here on the West Coast, a lot of the chicken prices for better quality chicken at the grocery store has gone up. It's gone up, I think, like 30 or 40%, it feels. Absolutely. But you got to throw a pandemic in there. <laughs> yeah, you throw a pandemic in there, and now everything's through the roof, and you got to start learning how to do stuff with cheaper cuts and, yeah. you know, all kinds of different things. Let's talk about people. Are you, is Uncle Steve's, is that somebody that you're partners with? Are you, and let's talk about your channel so people can know exactly, we talked about there's a bris- how to do brisket, but let's, I want to end this with a lot of information about all that you do. Sure, sure. So Uncle Steve is just, you know, all around awesome, great guy. And he sends me rubs and, you know, product and, you know, when he does product development and all of these types of different things, you know, he'll send me product and, and uh, you know, we'll play around with it. And That's cool. And so he's a great resource, you know, when it comes to uh, different rubs and, and things of that nature. But I, I get a lot of uh, people that, you know, send me rubs, you know, to check out, <laughs> you know, imagine. and... and Oh man, I mean it's 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 crazy, um, and and it's more than I can use sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. And so I'll open up my cabinets and have my friends over, and you know, guys, y'all want to start playing around with rubs, and you know, I've, I've got a, a few cookers back here, you know, and uh, one of the cookers I have that's I've been a lot of fun for everybody to get on. I've got a Lone Star Grills, uh, oh. a Santa Maria Grill. Oh, nice! You know? It's a pretty big boy, you know, and so we'll have. Uh, I don't know if it's a steak class, so to speak, but I have friends that'll come over that, you know, don't necessarily know how to make a great steak. And so, you know what, we'll get a, you know, a big, you know, ribeye roast and we'll cut slices off and fire that thing up. And you guys pick whatever seasonings you want, rubs, whatever, and they'll go through the cabinets and, you know, and we'll get back here and cook steaks. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You know, so that's been, uh, been kind of fun recently. Um, you know, over the last year uh, or so, I've connected with Ryan from Backline Smokers, uh, and I'm actually going to be working with him. Um, you know, trying to launch a YouTube channel for Backline. Excellent. Yeah, and 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 I keep telling him, I'm like, man, if people ask, I'm gonna tell them I'm a, I'm an ambassador for Backline Smokers because you're gonna build my pit. <laughs> so he's actually uh, he's actually working on a pit for me. But you know what? I've got so many cookers back here. I'm not really in a big hurry for it. And I told him, I'm like, man, you got a bunch of business, dude. You know, what, bump me or whatever if you have to. And and I'll keep cooking on the stuff that I have, you know, because, you know what, I want to cook on the things that people that are watching my channel can actually go out and get, 
you know, and, and can actually cook on, you know, and and let's face it, I mean, when you have upper end uh, cookers, not everybody can get into those, mm-hmm. you know, but everybody can get into a Weber kettle, you know, or they can get their version of a pellet uh, smoker or, or what have you. Or those small little offsets, like you said, the new brown fuzz. There's definitely ones that they can get. Yeah, it's. I see a lot of people, there are people who have YouTube channels that are just cooking on offsets. I think not everyone can do that. It's not. Absolutely. You know, and, and again, you know, it's it's because you have so many people out there that, you know, they, they're barbecue snobs, you know, saying, oh, you have to cook on an offset with sure. burning wood and blah, blah, blah. And not everybody, you know, can do that. Like we said, every some people don't have that lifestyle where they can sit back there and babysit a fire for 12, 14, 16 hours or whatever. Or have an apartment like me. I can't do it here. I, I can't have, actually, they can't burn wood here. Absolutely. You know, and so, uh, yeah, that was part of, you know, the thought process when I do some of the cooking. You know, honestly, and what people probably don't know about me is I am a stick burner by heart. You know, I love to get back here and fire up my Lone Star Grills uh, smoker and burn, you know, my splits or whatever. But... Again, like we said earlier, my channel, they want Weber cattle. They want pellet smoker, you know, and, and so that's what I cook on more, you know, and that's what I try to really concentrate with. And uh, you know what? I'm in the in that process now of, um, you know, trying to, you know, see if I can get into some sponsorships and partnership type things. So if anybody's out there and they're, yeah. you know, you own uh, pellet smokers or whatever, and you're looking for a spokesperson or whatever, here I am. So You should. I, uh, but, I, I think it'll happen sooner than later, I think. for You never know. Uh-huh. You never know. You know, see what happened. If so, you know, hey, uh, I thank everybody that tunes into my channel and has put me in this position. And there's a lot of guys out there in uh, YouTube land that have helped me, you know, get to where I'm at. And I call them the OGs of, of uh, YouTube, you know. And so people are quick to say, oh, dude, you're blowing up and this and that and the other. And, uh, you know, hey, I appreciate it. But, dude, there's a lot of people that's had a hand in helping me mm-hmm. get where I'm at. Who are some me. of those people? So T-Roy, if you know uh, T-Roy Cooks, uh, he's he literally, it's funny, when, when we got together, uh, he used to live right down the street from me. Oh, and that's I didn't so know. funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he lives about ten or fifteen minutes away, and um, so he's been a, a, a great guy uh, to talk to. Uh, channel called Cooking with CJ, uh, CJ Volk- Volkman. He's out there in California. Yeah, yeah. Another guy that I I talk to on a regular. Just talked to him yesterday, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's uh, great. Talk to him on a regular. Uh, I've got a friends over on the on the East Coast, Steel Drum Smokers, my man Dash. Uh, you know, talk to him. Um, you know, these guys have been around quite a while. I mean, there's just a ton of guys. You know, Justin from Baby Back Maniac, that West New Barbecue. I mean, all of these guys, man, have been around a while. And so I, I do a lot of talking to them and trying to understand different things. And they've all taken me in, man, from when I started, you know. And, and it's just been a lot of fun, a lot of fun, you know. So... You know, those guys have helped me to get where I'm at and uh, continue to help me grow and, and go where I'm going. And, you know, even though I've maybe popped past some of these guys and sub counts and that, it, man, it doesn't mean it. these yeah. guys have phenomenal channels. It's just it was the luck of the draw. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Doing anything any more special than these guys are doing. It just happens to be my time for right now. Mm-hmm. Next Maybe I might not get a sub, and these guys start. <laughs> you, never know. you never know when I'll hit the brakes or something. You really don't. You know, when people ask me, well, what are your what are your goals now for for your channel? And I'm like, okay, I gotta wait for normal to set in. Yeah. I don't. It's not normal gaining these many subs so fast. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't want to develop a a false sense of what is normal, mm-hmm. and then correct mentally when it doesn't continue to be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't want to, you know, look at, you know, sub counts and things of that nature. I just want to learn how to put the best product out there I can. What are the most recent videos that you put out or some favorite ones that you have so pe- that people can know about? Just dropped one this morning, as a matter of fact, um, which was a uh, baby rib, um, baby back rib cook. And it's basically, you know, the number one question I always get is about temperature. You know, what's the pit temperature? What's the internal temperature? You know, and and and. Um, and I'm trying to I'm trying to explain to people without you know I, I don't want to be a jerk, but I'm trying to explain. It's more about feel. We don't need all this technology, you know, this wireless this and Wi-Fi that, and we don't really need all this technology to learn how to cook. You know, if you you can you feel your pit temperature and you you know what you're looking for, and I always stress to people smoke to color. 
You know, smoke to color first, then you wrap to tenderize, and then you pull at tenderness, you know? And that's what I really try. That's great advice. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what cooker you're cooking on, you know, a kettle, a pellet grill, an offset. It doesn't matter. It's the same type of process, you know, and I'm speaking more for backyard cooking, you know. Um, but those are the marks that I try to go for, you know, and you know, you learn how to read your barbecue. If you put the ribs on and you come back after an hour, hour and a half, and you look at it and it looks a little crispy on the ends, maybe you're cooking a little high. True. You know, maybe, you know, calm it down, moisturize it, you know, and keep going. And, and those are the things that I look for. I don't get hung up on pit temperature. I mean, I can cook a brisket at 250. I can cook a brisket at 350. It doesn't really matter, you know. And, and, and so that's what I really try to stress to people. And that's what this video was more about. You know, I didn't use any temperature, you know, probes. You know, I didn't use toothpicks to check for tenderness. It's all by feel, you know, feeling those ribs. And what do they feel like when you're you're trying to break them down and tenderize them? Are they folding like they should? You know, that type of thing. You know, get your hands in there and kind of feel that barbecue and don't rely. Because you know what happens if your, yeah, exactly. your thermos is, is not calibrated correctly? Mm -hmm. You know, you know and, and also, like, I, the big thing, the really big thing, brisket everybody wants to learn how to make a, a great brisket <laughs> yes. you know and i'm not going to tell you my brisket is great you know i let other people decide that i try to make the best that i can but the thing that i'm really trying to stress to people is everybody that's telling you oh you cook this brisket to 198 oh you cook it to 202 oh that can't be further from the truth in my eyes because not all briskets are the same you know, you can get a case of brisket and you get five briskets on the pit and five briskets can be done at different times, different temperatures. You know, and it's just the way that that, that structural integrity of the meat is, mm -hmm. you know, and the fat and meat, all that. So what you do is instead of looking for a temperature, you're looking for the tenderness. You know, you check that tenderness. You know, I use my thermopin or probe I'm using. I'll, I'll poke it in the uh, point. I'll poke it in the flat, and I'm trying to get a consistent tenderness. And once I know that I've got that, I can pull it off. Or if I'm grabbing and getting my hands underneath that brisket, yeah, you could. and I'm using things to kind of feel that brisket and feel how it kind of folds and flops or whatever, that's letting me know that it's done. You know, and you're not, I'm not looking for a number. And I get that question all the time. What was the internal temperature when oh, you yeah, pulled that sure brisket? You, do, yeah. you have no idea. You know, and I think people think I'm being a jerk about my. I'm really not being. A, I'm, I'm being as honest as I possibly can. I really don't look at internal temperature, or a lot of times I don't notice it. Sometimes I do notice it. You know, if it takes. You know, we had one brisket we did a few weeks ago, and it was. Uh, I think it was two sixteen, and that was the highest I'd ever taken a brisket to. But it was two sixteen on the flat. By the time we pulled it off, and it still felt like, you know what, I probably could have let it go a little bit longer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on the brisket you get. So I think people need to, man, get away from the technology all the time and start getting in there and feeling that barbecue, man. And that's how you kind of really learn. Yeah. And, and if you're concerned, have a thermopan or have something to be able to check the temp, like on pork or to make sure you're at a, or a chicken or have at a safe number. But... I think that it's that feel like the guys, the guys who are really doing it, and especially the guys like a, like an Aaron Franklin, they're doing it by feel. They're doing it by, or the guys that work for him, they're all doing it by feel. Absolutely, and, and you know, and again, these guys are doing great volume, and so they get to really hone in that, you know, that technique and that practice. Whereas the backyard guy might only get to do a brisket, you know, maybe once or twice a month. That's true. You know, and and but you can still learn that by getting in there and feeling it, you know, whatever. And like you say, yeah, you can use that, you know, that temperature gauge just to verify and make sure that, hey, you know, we're at least edible. Yeah, exactly. And I tell some brisket is edible at like 130 degrees, but it doesn't mean it's going to be good. So I don't think you need to worry about the internal temperature at that point. It's literally about the way it feels. And also, like you're so. saying, is kind of just doing it, just doing that don't being scared you're gonna mess things exactly. up you're going to it's a lot of times too you mess stuff up in your mind but your friends just want to eat meat and they're just gonna uh -oh. as long as it's not <laughs> unsafe they're, they're all gonna love it all the time i you know i make something I'm like oh dude that was a fail and what do you mean that was a fail man that was good i'm like nah that wasn't really what i was looking for and they're like man if i could cook to your fails you know i would be you know, be all good. Yeah, yeah. But no, interesting point you just made, and I want to make sure I, we stress that again because I tell people that as well. 
don't be afraid of failure. You know, failure can be your greatest ally. You know, once you get out there and you start failing at some of these things, you're learning, okay, I did this with this cook and that didn't work like I wanted it, but this aspect of the cook did work. And so you can kind of tweak it, you know, and, I, and, and don't be afraid to take notes, get a notebook out there and, and jot down, you know, stuff that you do. And, and it's funny, you know, I saw the, um, the masterclass that Aaron Franklin did. And it was funny because he, you know, he, he does the whole timeline and all of that stuff. I'm like, dude, I've been doing that for years. I thought everybody did that, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I take that for granted thinking that people know all of these different little things. And as I'm on this YouTube journey and trying to show and whatever, I'm realizing that, man, a lot of people really just don't know. That's true. You know, and so it's, you know, get out there and, and, and just play around with it and have fun with it. Don't be, a, you don't have to be set on just because this person told you to do it this way. Get out there and then experiment with it and play with it and have fun. You know, that's the, the the biggest thing is just have fun with your mm -hmm. with your cooks. Don't, you know, get too stressed out don't about it. Try not it, to. Yeah. Too, don't. Yeah, exactly. Don't overthink it. At the end of the day, you're cooking. You know, you're cooking and, and you're having fun. That process. Is what it really yeah. comes uh -huh. to. Yeah. Yeah. And if if you're the guy that you still, hey, I just I just want to know, you know, this and that and the other, then, you know what, look at getting into some barbecue classes, you know, locally or whatever and, and mm -hmm. see what you can come up with. Yeah, I know for a fact I have a great one over here at Texas A&M. You mm -hmm. know, I go to that with John uh, Brotherton and Russell Regal and, and help those guys cook, you know, whatever. And it's a lot of fun. And you get people to come in there. And, and you know what? You learn something here and there. You and, then know? You, so, and then you meet guys that you will that you could ch trade numbers with. And then you could ask questions at, you know, at 4 in the morning. <laughs> it's absolutely. Absolutely, man. And, and, and nine times out of ten, people will answer your call, you know, and they're going to help you out with whatever it is. I mean, that's just the way the barbecue, we call it hashtag barbecue fam. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody is so willing to jump in and help everybody out, you know, and, and, and help you make better barbecue and have fun at doing it. Well, this was so great. I think I'd love to do maybe six months from now, a part two of this. So we can kind of talk yeah. about how, how the pandemic, what everything about the pandemic and your life and your channel and how things have grown and changed and, your percepts because things will be so different in six months. What are the best ways to get a hold of you? So uh, you can absolutely, um, you know, check out the YouTube channel, uh, Dogfather's Barbecue, and drop me a comment there. You know, whatever. Uh, you can get me on Instagram. You know, it's the Dogfather's Barbecue at the Dogfather's Barbecue. Uh, Twitter, I have Twitter, which is uh, Dogfather's BBQ, mm -hmm. and then I'm also on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is the Dogfather's Barbecue, and lastly, you can get me on email. And that's the Dogfathers BBQ, T H E D A W G F A T H A S BBQ at gmail.com. Perfect. That's awesome. And, and you'll answer questions that you won't always get back to people within three minutes, but you'll get back to them. And, and sounds like you like to interact with people that are interested in barbecue. Oh, I do. I, you know, whenever you, you, you know how it is, you get where you get the footage and now you got to go edit it. And you're like, oh, man, I don't feel like editing, you know. But for me, what, what really gets me is I start getting, you know, uh, emails or, uh, you know, Facebook, you know, whatever's, and I get people saying, you know, man, I, this is my first brisket. I've never done this before. And I followed your, you know, your uh, video and it came out excellent. And my family loved it. Oh, that's so nice. You know, and, uh, you know story, I get countless stories like that to keep me motivated. And I get stories, you know, of people that, you know, hey, you know, you know, one one of one of my subscribers in particular is going through uh, cancer, oh. and uh, you know he just found some some uh, you know time in watching my video and trying some of the cooks that I've done to where it gives him that amount of time that he he's not thinking about cancer or anything like that. He's just having fun cooking, you know, and and saying that man, you know, thank you for doing that video because you just really got me living life. You know, oh, for that great. amount, I mean, and that's just—I mean, man, that's, that's what it's all about. about. Yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, aside from any YouTube success or anything like, man, that right there mm -hmm. is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, so I love those types of stories, and and uh, man, keep it coming, keep Excellent. it coming. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope your your back continues to heal up, and you don't need any more <laughs> surgery. <laughs> yeah, man, I really appreciate that, and and uh, hey, good luck to your uh, to your mother as well. Um, She's strong. Yeah, man, 
Yeah, yeah. You know, we we have to get through it. We have no other uh, no other choice. So exactly. But uh, no, this was a this was a blast. I really like uh, you know what you do. Thank you. Uh, I really enjoy your uh, your podcast and your interviews, and and I like to share it out there and get people watching, man, because I think this is phenomenal. Yeah, thank you so much. I love this world, and I love sharing the people. It's the people in this world that that I've said it a million times, but it's true. And it, I want people to because you're getting a lot of a lot of interest in your channel, but also there's a lot of people that might not know about you and they should know about you and and i feel like i know you more just by talking to you for an hour so i can't wait to hang out once this fog lifts and we can hang out in austin go around that'd be fun yeah, absolutely man I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it excellent well have a great day